one. Man, I'm so stupid. I don't know what Kohlberg's is. Don't worry. I can help you. Don't worry. So Lawrence Kohlberg was a psychologist who studied moral development, and he kind of expanded off of Jean Piaget's um, uh, theories of moral development. And with him, there were six stages of moral development, but there were three general um, levels of moral development. So within each of those three, there were two stages. So with the first level is pre-conventional level, the second level is conventional level, and then the last one is post-conventional level or principle level. So level one is the pre-conventional pre level and this often occurs with children and um, it is it kind of deals with how morality is externally controlled and rules and authority figures are often used in this um, level and this is and the stages within them are um, stage one which is the punishment obedience orientation so um, people will listen to uh, if an adult tells them what to do if there's a consequence for their behavior and then stage two is instrumental purpose or orientation it's kind of the same thing as stage one um, behavior is again determined by consequences and um, the individual focuses more on um, rewards and or consequences uh, well done in your service, Archie. Oh, it's really come out of his shell. I don't know how you did it. Basically, it's a cute smile to the bride side, cute smile to the groom side, and then the rings. No. And you have to wear the outfit. No. You really do have to wear the outfit. What for? Grown ups like that sort of thing. Why? I don't know. I'll ask my mum. You're a detective. Yeah. Have you solved any murders? Sure, all loads. Can I see? You're right. What's all the stuff in his eye? Maggots. Cool. He said you had some pictures for him as a treat. Uh, yes, if he's uh, good. The heading. Lovely little village. So the last clip demonstrated level one, which is the pre-conventional level, because um, instead of doing his job because it'll be good for the wedding day or it's for the greater good, um, the little boy does it because he's getting a reward, which are the crime scene photos, which he's clearly interested in. So um, clearly he's still in the pre-conventional stage because he has to receive rewards uh, to do his job well. So level two is the conventional morality stage. And this one deals less with self-interest and more about um, maintaining a good image and other um, the eyes of other people around the individual. So um, within this level are two stages. And the first stage is the good interpersonal relationships. And this is when the individual will do good things so that um, they can be seen as good in the eyes of um, those around them. And the second part of the stage is maintaining the social order. So this one is a little bit more broad and it is the individual realizing that there are societal or cultural norms or rules that they must follow. And um, they will do this so that they can be accepted into society um, to uphold the law or to avoid guilt. Team champion. So he would pick us apart psychologically. <laughs> one time I was at the dinner table when I was like six because I had to be. My dad goes, how was school today? I said, it was good, but someone pushed Tyler off the seesaw. And where were you? I was over on the bench. And what did you do? Nothing, I was over on the bench. But you saw what happened. Yeah, because I was over on the bench. So you saw what happened and you did nothing. Yeah, because I was sitting over on the bench. Let me ask you this. In Nazi Germany, when people saw what the Nazis were doing and they did nothing, were those good people? Oh, no, those are bad people. You got to stop the Nazis. But you saw what they were doing to Tyler, and you did nothing because I was over on the bench. And then my dad said, just explain to me this. How are you better than a Nazi? And then my mom said, I made a salad with craisins. So the last clip, um, which was of comedian John Mulaney, 
um, basically demonstrates level two, which is the conventional level, because instead of, because John, John Mulaney's father, who he was talking about, um, wants him to know that, um, just because he doesn't get a reward for doing something, he should just do it because it's for the greater good. Um, and it kind of teaches him to, um, do good things, um, without getting a reward in return, really. And that kind of follows with the, um, stage three, um, of the conventional level, which is basically listening to authority figures and kind of adopting their morals. So level three is the post-conventional or principal level. And in this level, the individual kind of moves beyond the perspective of just the social norm. And their morality is kind of determined in abstract principles and values that um, they make for themselves. And that can apply to um, all situations and societies. And um, this is when the individual kind of attempts to understand all types of perspectives and viewpoints uh, when approaching a situation. And within this level, there are um, two stages and... Um, one of the state, the, the first part of the state, the first part of the um, level is the social contract orientation. And um, that one is most adults kind of reach this level, according to Kohlberg. And it's kind of individual rights determine behavior and individual views, laws, and rules as um, serving human purposes. And, um, but they know, understand and know that just because it's a law doesn't mean that it is completely the right thing to do. And um, they think more about the greater good. And stage six is the universal um, pr universal principle orientation. And Kohlberg says that not a lot of people actually reach this level and it's very rare. And this is the level that basically um, um, the individual finds a way to take in every single perspective they possibly can and they make decisions based off of saying, seeing what the greater good is. Forcing you out because that's illegal. No, they're not. But the whole atmosphere here has changed. Everybody looks at me like I'm either a victim or a traitor. I mean, I'm not even on any of the non-work group texts. And last night, Beefer invited everybody over for whiskey and cigars, and I wasn't included. Well, I mean, is not hanging out with Beefer really a punishment per se? Yeah, but if I'm not at Beefer's for whiskey and cigars, then I don't get invited to Vegas with Slurpee and Trendle, and I'm definitely not at Skidmark's pig roast. Man, these nicknames are just bad. I actually came up with Skidmark. It's... Very funny if you know the backstory. You pooped his pants. <laughs> yeah. But the point is, if I'm not at those events, then suddenly I'm not looked at for new accounts or promotions or anything. My career here is over. I'm really sorry. I feel like I messed up. I shouldn't have talked you into turning down that settlement. Hey, Seth attacked me, and I'm really proud of myself that I didn't let him get away with that. So even though it sucks, if I had to do it all again, I would. So the last clip demonstrated um, level three, which is the post-conventional morality level. And basically it does this because um, the woman who was getting her stuff and packing her stuff up in the show, um, she was ex sexually assaulted by a coworker. And instead of keeping quiet and um, just pretending that it didn't happen, she spoke up for herself and went to the police um, and defended herself and pressed charges against the man who did it to her and by doing this um she talks about this later on um and beforehand she says that because she wants to do this because she also wants to encourage other women to come up and talk about other women or men to talk about their experiences with sexual assault and to defend themselves and press charges against the people who have wronged them and this um and afterwards in the show actually another coworker of hers comes up and talks about how they have been sexually assaulted as well. And um, this kind of demonstrates the um, post-conventional um, morality because um, these individuals, they don't just pay attention to societal norms and they know that doing this can kind of affect their lives. Like she was ostracized for speaking up for herself and that's why she had to quit her job in the first place. Um, and also a lot of rape victims are um, shamed because um, they are questioned about what they were wearing that night or uh, what they did to provoke the attack in the first place. So um, instead of kind of being afraid of that and following with societal norms, she kind of went against it and thought about other perspectives and thought about other people's experiences and kind of said that she wouldn't care and she would defend them and uh, she wanted people to speak up for themselves basically.